Would you prefer to set or are you okay? I am good, thank you. So when we stopped, you had taken us to the point where a declaration had been made by the retaining officer for District 4, Mr. Mingo. That is correct. After the declaration had been made, did you leave Ashman's building? No, I did not. I remained there. And where did you remain? In the same tabulation room? For the most part, I was in the tabulation room. Periodically, I would venture out into, onto the different floors to see what was happening and then go back into the tabulation room. When, well, did anyone also remain with you? Yes. Um, all of the observers, both regional, uh, regional, international, and the local observers were still in the building, as well as the party agents, all of them, uh, with the exception of the APNU AFC party agents. At 10.27 p.m. that night, did you see, well, 10.27 p.m., did you see the CEO Myers? Yes, I did. And what, if anything, did she see? Uh, Miss Myers came into the tabulation room where everyone was uh, seated, they were waiting, and they, she told, she instructed everyone to leave the building because they were going to lock it. Did people comply with the no, instructions? They did not because earlier um, uh, there was a word given to everyone in the room that permission was granted for two persons per party to remain in the tabulation room where the um, SOPs were. And that was out of concern for the safety of the SOP. So um, at first they weren't allowing that and I believe that the parties made some intervention and uh, Mr. Loinfield didn't grant that permission for at least two per just sorry, mo two persons to be from each party to remain. Well, what had permission been given for observers to remain? I'm not aware if anything specifically was said about observers, but the observers remain nonetheless. And apart from your observer group, can you recall now which other observer groups remain? We had, um, there were observers from the Private Sector Commission, uh, GCCI, and there were also observers from the OAS, uh, from the uh, CARICOM observing team, from the Commonwealth and the EU. Carter Center also was present. Sure. And when you all did not comply with the instructions, can you tell me what happened? Eventually, um, the observers uh, started to fight out um, bit by bit. So they were among some of the first, and I, that was out of concern for safety. Um, word had circulated that it was no longer safe to be in the building. Sure, pause. At any point, did you see members of the riot squad come into the building? Yes. You were still in the tabulation room at that time? The tab I was out of it by that time. By the time we were just out when the riot squad uh, entered into the building. And when they entered, about how far away were they from you? We were, like, we were just like, evacuated from the building with our security team and at the same time they entered inside of it. So we were out on the outside, they just moved into the building. And you said you have a video of this? That is correct. And you said that this was the last time you saw the SOP. That is correct. Now, in your statement, you tell us that there have been legal proceedings initiated and so on, all right? I want us to move on a bit from that. Do you recall um, the 11th of March, 2020? Yes, I did. Did you go to Ashman's building on that day? Um, no, the 11th was when the judgment was given for, by the Chief Justice. And um, we were told to, uh, that we had to be back at Ashman's building on the 12th of March. Okay, so listen carefully to my question. So, oh dear, okay, sorry. I just wanted to ask you, between 6th of March to 11th of March, the tabulation process came to a halt? That is correct. Nothing happened. Thanks. Okay, so I just asked you, if you recall, if you had gone to Ashman's building on the 12th of March, 2020. Correct, yes. And why did you go there? Uh, this is in keeping with the Chief Justice ruling, which was handed out on the 11th of March, that the tabulation process is to resume at 11 a.m. on the 12th. 
And so observers um, proceeded, myself included, to the Ashman's building to observe the process again. When you went to Ashman's building, were you allowed entry? No. Myself and my colleague proceeded to access the Ashman building from the northern side, which was near the Parliament building. And there were barricades erected there, and we were prevented uh, by the police from entering further. You spoke about someone called Colin April. That is correct. As far as you know, um, who was Mr. April? Mr. April um, worked as a security officer at the GCOM, uh, with GCOM. How do you know that? We asked and he identified himself as a security officer for GCOM. How was he dressed? He was just very casual. There was nothing that indicated that he was an employee of GCOM. And was when Mr. Colin, well, when you saw Mr. Colin April, where was he in relation to Ashman's building? So after we could not access Ashman's building on the northern side, we took another route and entered from the eastern side, uh, uh, which is the Hatfield Street entrance, and that was where we met uh, Mr. Uh, April at the barricade uh, section there of the of the building. And apart from what you have just told us. Did he say anything else to you? Yes. He said that forthwith that it will be uh, one observer and one uh, permission and one political uh, party agent per party that will be allowed into the building and the parties were to select that one candidate, that one agent. Observer missions were to select their one observer to enter into the building and a new accreditation for observers will be given. Did he say how or when that accreditation would be given? No, he did not identify the process by which any new accreditation for observers were to be given. Were you the person representing Amcham? Correct. I was the one that was selected by Amcham. And did you clear police security? Yes, I did. When you cleared police security, did you enter Ashman's? Yes. I, when I cleared the security, uh, there was another layer of security at the entrance of the Ashman building. Um, I entered it and was pretty much outside um, of the tabulation center, uh, but right within the building. So is it that this was a different room that you went to? I went. Um, from where we were before we accessed the room, it was the same room but rearranged very differently. Um, the entire building of Ashman was completely deserted. And from because the tabulation room was enclosed by glass, you can actually see inside of it, it was no longer the same room that we had left. Everything was rearranged, furniture were now limited. There were just chairs, no table except for one head table. And did you see the returning officer? Yes, I did. That morning, Ms. Mingo did show up. And did you see the DCU? Yes, Ms. Myers was there. Apart from these two persons, did you see any other GCOM employees? Uh, there were a few of the junior level employees that would subsequently assist Ms. Mingo in uh, the tabulation. Um, two of them that I can name are uh, Ms. February and Ms. Dennis Babb Cummins. Did the returning officer speak to the persons there? Yes, he did. Um, he came to everyone and wrote their names down. And then he proceeded to say that we will enter into the room where the tabulation process will resume. Uh, we also, uh, myself and uh, party agents also asked him questions such as if someone is tired, if they were allowed to interchange with another person because they only wanted one person per party and observer there. And what did he say? Um, with respect to that, he said uh, he thinks that can be facilitated. Where was Miss Myers when this conversation was taking place? Uh, she was not anywhere in that location. So having told you that the tabulation process was going to commence, did you go anywhere? No, I stayed there until we were um, ushered into the tabulation room for the commencement of the tabulation process. And where was this? This was uh, through the glass uh, compartment um, where previously we were for the tabulation. I want you to look, I'm asking that you look at page 14 and in particular paragraphs 69 to 72 please.
Now, did you see at that point in time when the tabulation was about to commence, did you see the SOPs or any SOPs in the possession of the returning officer or any of GCOM's employees? No, there was no SOP present in the room. Did Mr. Mingo say what he would be using um, on behalf of his office to conduct the verification process? Yes, he did. Um, upon taking the receipts when we entered the room, he proceeded to explain um, what he will do and he said that he will be reading from a broad sheet. Um, this was prior to him reading sections of the uh, Representation of the People's Act to explain the process and then proceeded to bring out a broad sheet from what she's going to read. And you have a video and a recording of what occurred? That is correct. Did any, was any GCOM commissioner present at the time? Ms. Bibi Shadik, um, the deceased commissioner for GCOM, was present in the room at that time. And at, did, did she say anything? Yes, she raised objection to uh, what Mr. Mingo was about to do, that is to use the broadsheet, and told him that it, it was not in compliance with the Chief Justice ruling. Did you respond? Yes, he did. He told her that she should not interrupt him. And did he say where these numbers on the, the broad sheet had come from? Yes, we did inquire how did Mr. Mingo arrive at the numbers that he claimed that he would be using from the broad sheet. And he was very agitated, but nevertheless explained that he took the, the uh, original SOPs that were given to him and tabulated that, those numbers and came up with the broadsheet which he was going to use. He entered them in the computer, he says, and tabulated them and came up with the broadsheet. He said he entered them? Sorry? Did he say he entered them? He said the... it was entered into a computer. My apologies. He, it was entered into the computer. And at the time was an observer for the European Union there? Yes, the observer was there. Did the Anug agent ask Mr. Mingo how that party could verify the numbers in his in Mr. Mingo's SOPs? That is correct. There were a lot of back and forth between observers, party agents and Mr. Mingo on the process. The EU observer was there was asking him to further explain the process that he was really about to undertake in the tabulation because it was again a deviation from what um, was stipulated. Sure. Okay. So the EU observer did asked about what would be done if there were variances? That is correct. And did the EU observer ask about whether there would be access to the SOPs used by the RO for his tabulation? That is correct, yes. Did he reply? Did the RO reply? No, he did not reply. Did you see Ms. Sonia Parag of the PPPC there? Yes, she was present. And did she ask Mr. Mingo anything? Correct. Um, and, and if I may just backpedal a little bit, and her question came as a result, it was a follow up on what Mr. Jonathan Yearwood from Anarch had asked him, yes. which was um, how, would, how do we know that the numbers that he inputted into the computer and, and tabulated to produce the, the broadsheet was accurate. And that was when Ms. Parag also followed up with a question to ask how will we, uh, how will we know that it's accurate. And Mr. Mingo replied, then you can follow from your SOP. Did she ask him what would happen if the numbers didn't match? That is correct. And what was his reply? He replied that there are other recourses in law that she can adhere to. Did she ask him whether there was to be verification from the SOPs? Yes, she did. She asked him, um, will we be using SOPs versus SOPs in the tabulation process? And what was his response? It was no. Now, at some point, ma'am, the RO agreed to use SOPs, correct? That is correct. Having agreed, did he do anything? He instructed one of his, uh, the GCOM staff that was with him to go and bring those SOPs. And did the person return with the SOPs? She did not return with the SOPs. At 12.10, did you see the chairman of GCOM? Yes, I did. Was she accompanied by anyone? She was accompanied by two of her bodyguards. How did you know they were bodyguards? They were attired in a way that indicated uh, some level of security. They were walking in a very uh, peculiar manner 
and they were behind her and whenever she stopped they were right behind her in standing at an alert and attention. Did the chairman speak to the people in the room? Yes, uh, she did after, and the, par the parties and the observers in the room expressed their concerns about what Mr. Mingo was about to do, which is to read from a broadsheet and not the SOPs. And did the, ch did the chairman then say she needed to see the written judgment of the Chief Justice? That is correct. After the parties brought it to her attention that Mr. Mingo was deviating from the ruling of the Chief Justice, she said she wanted to read the written judgment of the Chief Justice to be guided on the way forward. At 2 p.m. that day, did Mr. Mingo say anything to those of you gathered there? Correct. Um, when, the, when the chairman for GCOM indicated that she wanted to read uh, the written judgment, it was Mr. Kit Nascimento, an observer from the Private Sector Commission, that asked for the uh, process to be halted until the chairman would have read the, the written judgment and give her guidance forward. So we waited in that room until 2 p.m. when Mr. Mingo arrived again to say that the process was suspended for the day. So between 9 and 2, did any verification take place None at all? None took place at all. Did you, did you return to Ashman's building on the 13th of March 2020? Yes, I did. Were you eventually allowed inside? Again, not for first. We were, uh, my, I was told um, I could not access the building as yet, and it was much later when I was able to access the building. Did anyone escort you into the building? Yes, myself and others were under heavy uh, police escort. What do you mean by that? So there were several police officers all armed, and they were walking around us to take us to the uh, back entrance of the Ashman building. It wasn't the, the main entrance as we used before. Was anyone threatening you as you entered the, the building? Not, no. So you entered the building, and where did you go? I entered in the building through a door that was on the southern side of the building, which was a, a door that really led to the parking lot. But when I entered the, that room, I saw that we were literally in the GCOM Media Center. And that was where the tabulation process would resume. And apart from yourself, from Amcham, were there other observers there? Cur yes, there were observers from the EU Carter Center, the OAS, CARICOM, um, the Commonwealth and there were local observers, again one each from each of these omissions, and there were local observers from the Ghana Bar Association, the Private Sector Commission, um, Amchan, and um, I think there was a GGCCI is present as well. And in this room that you were escorted to, can you tell us what facilities you had as observers to do your work? We were, the observers were, and the party agents were on chairs. That was the only thing that was made available to us. There was no table where we can rest either document, papers, or um, laptop. It was just some uncomfortable chairs, but there was a head table that the GM staff used. And were party agents in that room? Yes, they were. Were they there with their statements of course? Um, are they, PPP particularly had two suitcases of SOPs. Did you see GCOM staff there? Yes, I did. Can you recall who they were? Yes. Um, apart from Mr. Mingo, Ms. Myers was there. And uh, some of the staff that I saw and I knew by name because we'd seen them the earlier or the day before was Ms. Uh, February, Ms. Duncan, uh, Ms. Dennis Bat Cummins. Uh, there was a male that was inputting the statistics in the computer. Unfortunately, I do not know his name. Uh, there was Mr. Colin April, who was a security officer. And there were several other GCOM staff that, whose uh, identity I do not know. So did the RO, now that you all were about to commence the process, did the RO give any indication about any number that he was going to start with? Uh, they, Mr. Mingo indicated that the tabulation process was going to resume from where it left off. That was a point of contention because nobody can say definitively at which point it was left off. Therefore, they asked Ms. Domingo to provide the running totals um, so that they can follow uh, to ensure that they were on the same page before any such tabulation process can resume. And did he agree? Uh, he did not agree, nor could he produce any uh, totals to show a continuation. 
So did the process be, well, I don't know if you use the term start or recommence. At that point, no. There were lots of heated arguments between Mr. Mingo and the party agents over the, what should be the point of start for this uh, tabulation process that we were there for. Did Mr. Mingo eventually agree to restart? Yes, he did. As a matter of fact, Mr. Mingo was the one who initiated that idea. The way they were trying to get him to just know where you're going to start, he was the one that said that I'll restart it from 400, box 4001. And that was the first box, correct? That was the first box for the East, uh, East Bank Demerara. So when Mr. Mingo made this announcement, uh, what, if anything, occurred? At that point, the AP and UAFC uh, had a party agent in that room by the name of Ms. Carol Joseph, and she became extremely loud and intimidated and started to shout and berate persons in the room and to literally direct Mr. Mingo that he should not listen to any party agents or observer and he needs to continue the tabulation from where he left off and he is not to uh, start the process over again. Well, did Mr. was Mr. Mingo able to say from where he had left off? Okay. No, he was not able to say where he left off. So after receiving these directions from the party agent, what was the reaction of the returning officer? At that point, Mr. Mingo got very agitated because when he had engaged the parties earlier, despite the heated arguments, he was still relatively calm and was relatively calm when he announced the restart of the process from Box 4001. But after the intervention of Ms. Uh, Carol Joseph, Mr. Mingo uh, became very agitated and almost angry and then shouted that he will not restart the process and he will continue the tabulation. So you're telling us about someone named Ms. Carol Joseph. Who is this person? Ms. Carol Joseph was the um, party agent for the AP and AFC that was selected to be in the room. That was one party agent for that particular party. So we have a situation where the returning officer, Mr. Mingo, agreed to begin from box 4001. That is correct. And then within minutes after the intervention of this person named Joseph, he became agitated and yelled, I am... He's going to restart, he's going to resume it from some point, but not. He recanted his, his position of starting over. I see. After the RO took the decision to go along with the directions of Ms. Joseph, did anyone speak? Did, I should ask you this. Did you see any GCOM commissioner there at that time? Yes. There was a Mr. Robinson Ben, and he, all, he attempted to explain to Mr. Mingo that what he is about to do is in contravention of the ruling of the Chief Justice. There were a lot of exchanges between himself and Mr. Mingo. What did Mr. Mingo say to Commissioner Ben? He told him not to interrupt him. And further, um, actually uh, appeal for the police to put Mr. Ben out. Did, and did they put Mr. Ben out? They attempted to, but he didn't. Uh, he didn't. What for the police, you said? Mr. Mingo. To eject the, the GCOM commission? Correct. There were, he was also supported by um, a gentleman whose name I don't know that was also uh, shouting at party agents and observers that they were talking too much and um, that they need to behave themselves. And they also uh, appealed to the police to come in and quiet the place and to put anybody out that was making any noise, including Mr. Colin a uh, April. Did the police actually come into the room? Yes, one police did come into the room. And that police officer uh, eventually stood between uh, the head table and the party, where the party agents were, to make sure that nobody got closer to them. I want to go back a bit. You told us that you all had entered the building under heavy police escort. Correct. So what became of those police officers after you all went to this other room? where the verification was due to either start or restart? They were outside of the building. Uh, 
after this exchange with the GCOM commissioner, and I take it there were other exchanges? Yes, there were. What did the RO do? So um, he proceeded to direct the, uh, the GCOM staff to start calling from the SOP. So, sorry, they, the documents they had in front of them. And they proceeded to call out uh, votes allocated to part to the spreadsheets? Um, we could not verify if, if it was a spreadsheet or SAP, but there were documents in front of them. We weren't allowed to examine them. Now, you describe the SOPs as being, you, you made a gesture at the beginning of your testimony indicating that they were thick. Correct, and very big. And yes. So, did they appear to you to be SOPs? Um, from where I was sitting, their paper, you can see sheets of paper, they were of a bigger size, but exactly what they were, we could not say. I could not say. I wasn't allowed to examine it, although there were appeals to examine those documents. And when you say the GCOM staff members started to call out figures, are these the same people who you wiped? who you identified by name or just a few that minutes ago. That is correct. Did the diplomats remain in the room? The diplomats from the, the four countries, the ABC countries, were present and then they eventually left after Ms. Joseph insulted them. And they saw that the process again was, um, uh, it lacked transparency, it was not in keeping with the Chief Justice ruling. When you say ABCE, um, that would be the, uh, the U.S. Ambassador uh, was present, the British High Commissioner was present, um, the Canadian High Commissioner was present, and the head of the EU delegation was present. And they were insulted by Ms. Joseph? That is correct. Who said what? So um, Ms. Joseph said that they were meddlers and they should not be here uh, in, in Guyana doing anything that they were doing and that they should leave the country. Right. So did these it? Were, sorry. These were people at ambassadorial or high yes. level. Yes. Such as Ambassador Sarah Ann Lynch, Ambassador. Uh, uh, you told us, and, and Ms. Joseph was telling them that they should leave the country. Yes. That they were meddlers. That they were. They were meddlers. Meddlers. Yes. Now well, this was a process under the authority of the returning officer. Did the returning officer say anything to these diplomats when these insults and, and threats and so on were made? He did not say anything. Did he say anything to Ms. Joseph? He did not. He just kept saying her, uh, tell her to calm down and sit. That's the only thing he said. Calm down. And sit. And sit. And sit. <laughs> Did she calm down and sit? No. And the, the GCOM staff, did they start calling out numbers? Yes. Describe the process very quickly for me, if you can. So, whatever the document was that was in front of them, and, we, and I could not verify that, neither could my colleagues, uh, observers, um, what was observed was that they were calling these numbers per party very rapidly. When I timed it, it was three to four SOPs being completed in one minute or less. And were you as an observer, having, take, having been engaged in the process of taking down the numbers before, were you able to get the numbers down that were now being called at the space? I was able to get um, most of the numbers uh, down because I had to devise strategies of how to actively listen, block out the noise that I was hearing because there was a lot of uh, chaos taking place. Ms. Joseph was shouting, the GCOM staff was racing ahead with numbers, party agents were telling her, uh, GCOM, that they were doing this in contravention of the Chief Justice ruling, so there was a lot of stuff going on. I had to drown those out, listen carefully, enter and type in as much as I can with specific focus on the APNU AFC and the PPP's number in particular. Now, was there another commission, GCOM commissioner there? Yes, that was Mr. Says Gunraj. Did he speak at all? Yes, he was uh, very loud in telling Mr. Mingo that he was in breach 
of the Chief Justice order and that this needs to stop. Did Mr. Mingo take on this other GCOM commissioner? Yes, he did, and he just ignored him. Um, just said if, uh, he, he just did not listen to what Mr. Gunrad said and just proceeded to have the staff uh, keep calling those numbers out. Can you tell me anything about uh, the figures which were being called by the GCOM employees? As, what, as had happened on uh, the fort, um, the numbers that were being called by GCOM were not the same numbers that were on the SOPs that the party agents had on their possession. And I was able to see that, particularly with Mr. Says Gunraj, who was turning around ever so often. Um, and showing observers, and I was seated in front next to him, and he was showing everyone what was on the spreadsheet versus the numbers that they were calling. So, so you have Mr. Mingo, or or maybe his staff, the staff or Mingo himself, the staff, out, the staff, the staff, are calling out numbers. That's right. Party agents have their SOP. And they are able to establish immediately on hearing the call numbers that it there was no it was not corresponding. That is correct. With the the votes um, that were reflected on the SOPs, did was Mr. Mingo's attention called to this fact? Yes, it was. By party agents. Yes, it was. And he did nothing. He said nothing. He did said nothing. Said nothing. Did nothing but instructed the staff to keep calling those numbers out. So despite what you may say is a complaint, mm -hmm. he said continue. That is correct. Okay. And during this process, did you see either the DCEO or the CEO? I did not see the CEO, but the DCEO was present in, in that room. Sure, and did the DCEO then address the, the complaints by the party agents? No, she did not. Did the DCO address the problem where the diplomats were told to get out of the country and so on? No, she wasn't. She was in and, in and out of the room, but at no point in time, whenever she was there, did she address any of those concerns. So did you observe a pattern from yes. the numbers which were being called out? Yes, I did. Um, based on the SOPs that the parties had in front of them and, we were, and I was able to see, and based on what I was hearing, uh, what was very clear that there was a pattern increase in the number of votes being read out for the APN AFC and a decrease in the number of votes allocated to the PPP. As an observer, did you get uh, statements of poll from presiding officers of the... I got a copy from the polling station that I was at in addition to the photograph that I also took on the top of the wall. Yeah. Now you told us that after this day, or after, um, after the 13th of March, that Amchan had done its own tabulation and count using SOPs from all your, your observers, That's correct? That's correct. Alright, so is it correct that at 10.18 that morning a marshal of the court came into the room and served the returning officer with a document? That is correct. And the returning officer left? He left but gave instructions to his GCOM staff to keep reading those numbers. And did they, in his absence, con sorry. Just a quick question. You heard the RO struck his staff to continue calling on the figures. Yes, I did. Notwithstanding that he had to leave. That is correct. Yes. Thank you. I want you to be clear, and if you can't recall, say so. When he gave this instruction to the staff to continue calling these numbers, was the DCO there? She was not in the room at that point. But you actually heard Mr. Mingo say, continue calling the numbers? Yes, I did. Did they comply with his instruction? Yes, they did. And um, 
When what happened after that? What observations did you make? So Mr. Mingo left for court and the staff kept calling out the numbers from the document that they had in front of them. Mm -hmm. And after some time, the party agents again uh, protested what was happening in the room and the continuous reading of the numbers which were again at variance with what is on the SOP. And one by one, the party agents left the room, most of them left the room and the only ones that were in the room were the observers, myself included, and the GCOM staff kept reading those numbers despite the party agents not being in the room. Now, you had referred to the fact that one of the observers was the Guyana Bar Association. That is correct. Was there any representative of the Guyana Bar Association who stayed back with you? Correct. Now, we had Miss Pauline Chase. Mm -hmm. She was of the Guyana Bar Association and she was in the room. And did Miss Chase say anything? Yes. So, Miss Chase was trying to tell the GCOM staff um, that they were uh, in, they were not in key, uh, uh, adhering to the ruling of the Chief Justice and she was verbally attacked by Miss Joseph. When you said verbally attacked? So Miss um, Joseph again got up and a very loud voice, threatening voice, and threatened Miss Chase. Uh, she insulted the observers in the room saying that observers are, again, we're meddlers, um, we, should be not, we should not be doing the things that we're doing and that we should keep quiet, and then she told Miss, and, and while she's saying all of that, Miss um, Chase proceeded to explain, but I'm, Miss Chase is saying, but I only want to point out that you're not, this is not in keeping with the Chief Justice ruling, and Miss Joseph responded by saying, you don't know who I am, you better sit there, if you know what's good for you, I'll stamp you. Stamp. Stamp. As an STMP, stamp. I'll stamp. I'm not sure what she meant at me. She said, I'll stomp you. There's a word that's close to stamp. It's, it's stomp. But she said stamp. S-T-A-M-P. That's what she said. Guys have a way of broadening words. So. <laughs> but she said the word stamp. Yeah. So I suspect that she stomp meant you. stomp at her. So even though, even though the other party agents had left, Miss Joseph stayed back. Is that yes. what you're saying? She was there. Okay. At 1.15, the returning officer came back? That is correct. And then he told you all that the Chief Justice had given instructions that GCOM had to display the SOPs from which they were calling? That is correct. And what else did he then say? And he said that they don't have equipment to facilitate that process in the room that we're currently in and that the uh, tabulation process will be suspended until 4 p.m. that afternoon where we are to reconvene at the GCOM's headquarters for the continuation of the tabulation. And further, he said that the, uh, when we get to the headquarters of GCOM, that he will continue the process at box 4792. So, up till this time, the tabulation process was still incomplete. That is correct. Did you go to GCOM's headquarters for 4 p.m.? Yes, I did. And can you describe to me what you saw when you got there? So, um, if entering Ashman's building earlier that morning was difficult and under heavy security, when we got to GCOM's headquarters, the security was even more intense um, and the, uh, they were even more, they were heavier than earlier. Um, we got, I got into the GCOM headquarters and was directed to, a sh to, to be under a shed um, where the tabulation was going to be held. Was the returning officer there for 4 o'clock? Yes, Mr. Mingo was present under the shed that was very poorly laid out for observers. And was he the only person from GCOM there? He, I saw him, uh, Ms. Myers was uh, in the background, but uh, Mr. Mingo was in front of the head table along with the same uh, set of staff that he had earlier in the Ashman's building. And were there observers there at the time? Yes, they were. The same observers that were there earlier were present um, at, the, at the GCOM headquarters. What about party agents? Were they there? Yes, the same party agents that were there earlier were the ones that were uh, present in the afternoon. Did he resume the tabulation process? Not immediately, because when he uh, took his place at the head table, 
um, again, uh, he was questioned on how this process was going to take place and at what point. And at that juncture, Mr. Mingo did not answer any question except to say, I am not answering any question. That's, that was a phrase that he kept using all the time. Was Miss Carol Joseph here? There? Yes, she was there. And what was she saying, if anything? So Miss Joseph pretty much uh, continued the same uh, behavior that she had displayed at the Ashman's building. So she was uh, extremely loud and intimidating, and then kept berating everyone that was uh, seated there that they were only really asking questions ever so often and told Mr. Mingo that he needs to proceed with this tabulation from where he left off. Did Mr. Mingo comply? Yes, he did. So the tabulation began? The tabulation commenced um, from what he said uh, at Ashman at 4792, box 4792. Sure, and were you a, numbers were called? Numbers were called rapidly in the, in the, at the same pace that they were being called at the Ashman's building. And were you able to see the projected figures? Um, I saw the projected figures, um, albeit it was faint. And um, there were some other things on that, uh, the projected image that I, I observed as well. What did you observe? I observed that there were markings on those uh, uh, SOPs. And I'm saying SOPs with uncertainty because, I, again, we were not allowed to see it. But there were images projected on the screen that appeared to look like SOPs. Um, they were faint in colors, and what I saw that the SOP, the SOPs, and I'm saying that again very cautiously, had markings on them, and I saw most definitively that the numbers for some of the SOPs uh, for APNU was scratched with a higher number written, handwritten on it, and the numbers for the PPP were scratched with a lower number on it, and, and on some SOPs where there were zeros. Um, for the APNU AFC, it was changed to an 8. Increased or inflated numbers? I knew there was increased based on what I said, but to recall them precisely, I, I cannot say. But what I did is I did make a record of the, the box, the, the SOP number that this was uh, being uh, observed for. And while this was happening, were there police officers around? There were lots of police officers heavily armed around. Can you tell us where they were? They were not directly under the shed, but they were around the surround. They were in the surrounded uh, environment of that shed. Did anyone attempt to go to the table where Mr. Mingo was? Yes, the E observer again attempted to see, uh, validate those, to, to verify those SOPs um, that the GCOM staff alleged or claimed that they were using, but he was prevented from doing so. By who? By Mr. Mingo and the GCOM staff. And at 5.15, did the EU observer leave? Correct. He left. And did the, was he, he followed by the Commonwealth observer? That is correct. When these two observers left, was the calling out of figures still happening? Yes, it was. Can you, can you give us some detail about this international observer? Did you know who it was? I remember, I can identify my scene, but I cannot remember his name. Nor which mission he was attached to. The EU, the, the was, was the EU observer. Yes, yes the, the EU representative. Correct. He said he was prevented from getting Closer. That is correct. By by Mr. Mingo. That is correct. Well, I'd like to know what happened. Was it Mr. Mingo stand so, up, put his arms out? Did he say anything to him? So if if, if I may uh, just revert a little bit, when we were in the build Ashman's building on the twelfth, it was the same EU observer that asked if there was any way that we could see those SOPs to to verify them stating that that's just really what our mission is. And we have no stakeholder stake in this entire process except to validate the document. And um, subsequently, they had written GCOM a letter asking to see those SAPs, but it never got an answer. And at, on the afternoon of the 13th, when we were all under the shed at the GCOM building, the EU observer referenced that letter and says, can we get an answer as to whether we'll be allowed to see those SAPs? And Mr. Mingo said that is for the CEO to answer. He didn't give anything further. 
When the, in light of that, the EU observer attempted to get closer to the table so he can see that document that they were calling those figures out and he was told he needs to go back to his seat and don't come any further. Um, periodically, when if anybody attempts to get closer, they would call the police to stand in the way and prevent anyone from getting closer to the table. Did the party agents remain or did they walk out? The party agents remained except for uh, Mr. Yes, uh, Mr. Jonathan Yearwood left and Mr. Sace Narayan left. And was there an incident between Mr. Yearwood and Ms. Joseph? That is correct. When Mr. Yearwood left, and he told uh, he told Mr. Mingo that if there was any major unrest in this country, he would be held responsible for it. And when, as he was proceeding out, Ms. Carol uh, Joseph taunted him and told him, "You just leave, leave, leave." Okay. Not so there was an altercation. And there was an altercation sure. between the two of them. Okay. But did you remain? Yes, I did. And at 6 p.m. Had the sub-district of East Coast Demerara been concluded? Yes, it had. And had East Bank Demerara been concluded? Correct. So the East Bank Demerara was concluded at Ashman's building on, on that morning, just before the Chief Justice had ruled, and they had just started East Coast. So it was a continuation when he mentioned Box 4792. That was a continuation from the East Coast of Demerara's uh, tabulation. Now you had told us that when there was, when the process was supposed to have started back at Ashman's building earlier that day, that you had observed a pattern of increasing votes or increasing numbers for the APNU AFC and decreasing numbers for the PPPC. Um, was this still the case? That is correct, it was still the case. Um, we, and I observed the same pattern for uh, various polling stations on the east coast of Demerara. However, um, from all uh, analysis and observation, it was far more pronounced for the east bank Demerara than it was for the east coast Demerara. And did the OAS that afternoon issue a press statement? Yes, they did. And did they withdraw from Guyana? That is correct. They said because of the continuous uh, attempts at frustrating the process and the lack of credible credibility in the tabulation process, they could not continue this any longer and they were withdrawing from Guyana. At 10.41, was the East Coast Demerara count concluded? That is correct. And when it was finished, what happened? When it was finished, Mr. Mingo uh, had prepared a statement which he read the results similar to what he did on the 5th on the balcony and uh, declared the results showing that the APNU had won the elections for District 4. He signed it in front of everyone and Ms. Carol Joseph also signed it as the only witness. And who did he declare to be the winner? I'm sorry, you have to come in. Uh, Ms. Carol Joseph, is this the same person you told us was an authorized APNU AFC party agent? That is correct. And she signed the declaration? That is correct. As a witness? That is correct. Were other party agents invited to or permitted to sign the declaration? Mr. Mingo asked if anybody else has come in and no one got up. So they were invited? They were invited to sign it. So you say that, uh, that Mr. Mingo made a declaration of the results. Who did he declare to be the winner? He did not say specifically that the APM wanted, but by virtue of him calling those numbers out, you were able to tell, based on the majority of, of votes cast, who the winner was for District 4. It was the winner. It was the APN AFC. Now you have set out in your statement from paragraph 4, 104, to 109, what Amcham's findings were. That is correct. Would you like to see those paragraphs again, or are you familiar with them? I'm familiar with them. And those findings were made 
after conducting the process which you had described to us at the start of the testimony of your testimony? That is correct. Apart from your um, observations and your findings, do you know whether any other observer groups did reports? Yes. Uh, all of the observer group did reports. The EU, the OAS, the Commonwealth, CARICOM, they all did their reports for submission. And have you seen the OAS and EU reports? I've seen those reports. And if, if I may just quickly add, um, after this process had ended, Amcham did an independent uh, comparative analysis of the results. I had on my possession um, actual records uh, as they were being read of the numbers being called by GCOM. So those are authentic recordings that I have um, that were not altered. And I also have, we, Amcham also had copies of the SOPs that we independently retrieved, not from the political parties, including the ones that we had. And we did about 100, uh, we did an analysis of about 170 plus SOPs and found that 84 of them were not in compliance. Uh, GCOM's numbers were at variance with 84 of those SOPs, basically, and that's how we were able to conclude that the results were not credible. I'm sorry. At several places in your statement, you say you have photographs or video recordings of a number of occurrences. That is correct. Are those available to the commission? Yes, they are available to the commission. Yes, now you said 84 contained variances when you were doing your independent checks. Were these variances consistent one way or were they mixed up? Can you tell me the a little more about the yes. variances? So the 84 SFPs that we found to be, uh, the, the 84 uh, ballot boxes that we found to be at, at odds with the SOPs were predominantly from the East Bank and the East Coast, not from South North or North Georgetown, so just those two sub districts. Yes. And the pattern was in all of those cases, the numbers of votes allocated to the AP and the AFC were increased, and in all of those cases, the number of votes for the PPP were decreased. So what you are saying is that the variances were between the actual figures you were seeing on these 84 SOPs and what had been given by GCOM as being the numbers for those sub-districts? Correct. Commissioners, we do have some audiovisual material um, which we would like to have shown. It is all together and after it is shown I may have to ask or I may ask the experts to pause it at the end of each one so the witness can describe what is in it. May I have your leave to do that? So, ma'am, certain things are going to come up on the screen. I'll ask you to have a look and then you can indicate to me what it is you see, if you are able to identify. Yes. Okay, so can you tell us what that is? Yes, that is the statement of poll. Um, for the polling station at Monrepo Primary School that I observed. Um, and if you notice there at the bottom would be the name for Onika Reese, and she did not sign it, like I said. Okay. And you would notice as well that the numbers for the PPP was 261, and the numbers for the AP and new AFC was seven. Okay. Right, so that is uh, one of the, the SOPs that I used in my studies as well. Thank you. I'm asking that this photograph be admitted as RR1. Yes, be admitted. You have an RR1 already? Yes. yes. The statement, the statement is RR1. Oh yes, I beg your pardon. RR1. What am I saying? Yes. RR1. Yes, I know. Yes, can we move on? Yes, please. Can we move on to the next image, please? Right. 
Are you able to say anything about that photograph? Yes, so this photograph just basically showed that um, the DROs had provided the package that contained uh, documents for the RO's office. You would see it says RO package at the top. So we had copies that they were submitting that to the to Mr. Domingo. So the persons in white shirts are DROs? Those, I'm not sure if they're DROs, but there was a GCOM staff. Okay, sure. I'm asking that that photograph be admitted as RO3. Yes, RO3. What does this image say? Can you see it? Yes, I can. Now, that is a snapshot of the uh, Excel um, sheet that AmCham was using for us to tabulate. So when we hear GCOM calling their numbers out, we would enter it into each column that represents the party that's uh, going across from, from left to right. You will see at the top it says AMA, AP, uh, NUAFC, CG, LJP, PPP, PRP, TCI, TNM. And so as they're calling, the box numbers are also stated to your extreme left. Uh, that is the division number and it also has the, polling, the name of the polling place, including the number of electors for that particular polling station. So I see. So Amcham um, was keeping a record that is of the correct. ballot box numbers. Correct. correct. We, had, we already had this set for our use. So as, we, as they were saying, for example, box number 4001, we already had 4001 ready there, and as they're calling out, let's say 10 for uh, APNU AFC, 3 for PPP, we would enter that into the vacant columns. And this forms part of the records that you that looked fair. at in coming to your That vacant. is fair. So this actually captures GCOM's numbers that they were calling. Sure. Kapish Chairman has a question for you. Use the expression. Yes. Um, I'm sure. That's, um, Who is we? Yeah, um, I was doing that, you and my it. correct. I was doing that, and my colleague next to me. We were taking turns doing that. Right. Then two persons were allowed. Yes. Might this be admitted as RO four? Could we go on to the next image? Could that be enlarged a bit? So you would notice it says there. It sounds too big. Could we? Scroll down, yes. What is that at the top? It says number of boxes not counted, 59. So on the 4th of March, when there was this controversy as to the number of ballots that were not counted for uh, North and South Georgetown, Amtron was able to provide this list of ballot boxes that were not, or SOPs that were not counted. Um, I took a photograph of this and I submitted this actual list to Ms. Myers. Is that your handwriting? Yes. Might this be admitted as RR5? Next image, please. Could we, could you, and is it possible to enlarge this at all? So this is an image that I took of the um, court martial attempting to serve the injunction on the 5th of March uh, to various persons at GCOM, including the chairwoman and a few others, but they were not allowed. Uh, some of them were not allowed, and at the very top, it's the court marshal waiting there. Could not find the persons that he wanted to serve the injunction. Is that the person with a document in his hand? He, that's a third person from your the third person from your right in the white shirt. Oh, I see. Next to the police officer. That is correct. So these police officers were standing at the bottom of those stairs and at the top, and they were preventing him initially from going to the top and serving the injunction. Thank you. Might this be admitted as R R six? Yes. So can we go to the next image? So this is um, our sort of like a bit of a, a foundational information that we were using that showed the number of polling stations for each of the sub-district for District 4 as well as the number of electors for sub-district 4. Thank you. Might this be Mark R R7? Yes. Can we move to the next image? Where is this? So this is an, on the morning of the 5th of March mm -hmm. when Mr. Levens, which is on your uh, left hand side, and that is his colleague, another GCOM staff, There's, those were the two persons that were the replacement staff when the two women could not go further. That's okay. Mr. Levin there and they're about to, um, and that's a, the projector that you're looking at where this, this guy on the right was the one who was entering the data as it was being called. Okay, could, could we just uh, make it a bit smaller? And what, are you able to say what is in front of Mr. Levan? That's a laptop. This is your photograph? Yes. 
Ashman's where it was held from uh, the, the night of the 2nd of March up until the 5th. Sure. Can we move to the next image, please? So what you're looking at there is Mr. Levens in the process of calling out the numbers um, of when he was given the opportunity to do that. And what we were looking at there is when he started to put his hand on his head and claim that he was tired and, and so forth. So this is actually um, taken when he was calling those numbers. If you look carefully, if you expand the photographs, you're going to see the SOPs that are actually in front of him. His hand is resting on it, and he had more in front of him. So it can go a little bigger, and you'll see the stuff. So we see, see that those are the SOPs? Those are the SOPs, yes. You saw them? Yes, I did. Yeah. This, this is your photograph. This is my photograph. The, it, might this be our, our name? Yes. Next image, please. So this is on the night um, of the 4th of March when the two female GCOM staff said that they were tired and nobody knew what next. So we, there you can see, as I said, you had Mr. Lowenfield who's in the center. That's Mr. Levens there on, his, on my right and that's Ms. Myers that's standing there. They were on their mobiles at the end they're not really telling us what's next. And this is, if you look, there are some garbage bags at the bottom. Those are where envelopes were, um, were secured in. RR10. Yes. And this would be on the 4th of March, um, just maybe after 10, when Mr. Mingo uh, supposedly fell ill. And you're looking at Mr. Hetzberger who was uh, Mr. Lowenfield's um, executive assistant, or personal assistant, I think it was. He's in the white t-shirt, and that is Mr. Um, Colin April in the total white attire that's fetching him down. Yeah, that's, he's yeah, back, to us. back to the camera, yes. Our, uh, might this be our, our 11? Yes. Next image, please. So this is an interesting photograph. Um, this photograph, was taken of the very last tabulation that was done using SOPs on the morning of the 5th of March. After this, using SOPs, no one knows and can validate what happened next. So if there was any uh, uh, information or evidence that you need to, by which to measure what happened and what the running totals are, this would be the photograph that actually proved it. So, yeah, so what happened is uh, after everything just went uh, chaotic, um, with, what, what I did was to snap that screenshot so we know what was projected on the screen at that point. So this is the very last um, evidence of tabulation that was done before everything went downhill. Might this be admitted as RR12? So what, what, have, do we see here? what you have here is, um, and this was a photograph that my colleague on the outside took to send after we heard um, I heard in the room, because I was in the room, that Ms. Myers had given instruction for the door to be locked. So we told them to see if they can get a photograph and send it to me. This was a photograph that was taken of the one that locked the door and the police was guarding the door so no one can go into the tabulation room. So this was a photograph which you received from a colleague? As we asked him to what, take it out. Was first. this an Amcham colleague? Correct. This would have been what day? This is on the, this would be on the 4th, the 4th of March. Might this be marked R, R, 13? Yes. Can we move forward? Yes, so I think this one has some audio. That has to be moved. The Commission has I promised, listened, and deliberated, and they have that has to be.
and he did the random sampling and saw that the, the spreadsheet was not uh, correspondent to the SOP. The voice note that you're about to hear is what I recorded of him saying that they're going to use the SOPs. We'll continue on. The Commission has, as I promised, listened and deliberated, and they have agreed that we will continue the process here with all those who are designated to be here to use statement v statement. So that is what we will do for the remainder of the 300 and whatever statements we have um, and counted for for region 4. Um, so I think the, the staff will prepare the statements. So we'll go statements by statement starting, I take it from 411, 111, A, right down until finish his back. By now I take it the issues of whether we have six or seven statements that are shown not counted. So this is a photograph that I took when I was waiting to be let into the tabulation room on the 12th of March after the, we were, the observers were told that we had to get new accreditation and I was allowed into the building. And while I was waiting, I took a snapshot of the, of the tabulation room. You would have seen that it's rearranged, it's clean, it's rearranged and there's just chairs there and the head table is uh, where the white tablecloth is on to your extreme right. So. So that room, can you go back? Yes, could you go back to the photograph, please? That room was tabulated. Correct. And that is the room that Ms. Meyer said that GCOM staff felt threatened. That is correct. Can like this be admitted as RR14? Next photograph, please. So that, tell us what this is? That's one of the staff that was reading at the um, GCOM headquarter on the 13th of March. Do you know her name? Um, I'm not sure if she's February or, or Denny's bad. She, but it's one of those two persons. I'm not sure which one is she. Sure. I'm sorry. I, I RR15, my dad had been marked yes. RR15, yes, what's this? So that is a photograph that was taken of the police um, as they were about to get closer when Mr. Mingo was about to make his, dec his second declaration on the night of the 13th. And was this at GCOM headquarters? This is at GCOM's headquarters under the shed. Might this be admitted as RR16? These are all the pictures. I'm going to ask for your leave for RR2 to 16 to be saved on the exhibit which we have got your permission to have marked as CE1. That's where we are keeping all the audio visual material. So do I have the commission's leave for that? And I have CE1 in my possession. Commissioners, I regret that we have we are having some technical difficulties, but we do have videos which I think, and audio recordings, which I think would be of use to the Commission in its deliberations. And I regret that I will have to ask um, the witness to return tomorrow morning so we can have those. I don't want to ask for anything to be admitted until the Commissioners are able to verify yeah. that there is some connection with the witness. Yeah. Yes. There are two other um, things 
which I would like to have marked, but they are not electronic material. So, Miss Rasul, you said that you had seen the report of the European Union observation mission. Yes. That is correct. I'm going to place a document in your hand and tell me. Yes. Is this the report? Yes, it is. I'm asking that this be admitted as RR60, RR70. Can I ask you? Was it sent to you from the Not from the Mission. Mission. I got it from, from various other um, individuals who got it and they sent it to me. None of the reports I got directly. I got them indirectly. So when you say you got them, you mean Amcha? That is correct. Now, you also referred to seeing the OAS report uh, that is correct. For, for the March 2020 elections. I'm going to ask that a document be shown to you. You have a look at our document. Oh, I have copies for the commissioners as well. Is that the OAS report which yes. you received? That is correct. And did you receive it on behalf of Amcha? I got it on behalf of Amcha, indirectly of course. Thank you. You got it from? Indirectly. I got it from Amcha. Yes. Now, might this be admitted as RR18? Commissioners, this is as far as I can go to deal with this witness. The EU report, 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 RR17. So this is RR18, oh yes. Yes. Thank you very much, Mr. Ashton. Looking forward to your 